the co-owner of FAS Bookkeeping and Tax Services and we provide a, a bookkeeping and tax services to small businesses. It's also our passion to help business owners thrive by having an accurate and reliable financial information to make an informed and intelligent decision for their business. Lately, we've been helping business owners understanding some of the the loans available that's provided by SBA, whether it's IDA loan or uh, the PPP loan. So today, I will be discussing the economic injury disaster loan. So a lot of questions that I'm getting is, uh, what can I use the IDA loan for? Christy, what can I use the IDA loan for? And uh, there's really not a lot of specific guidelines or prescriptive guidelines from SBA with regards to what are eligible expenses. So unlike uh, PPP where there's probably four or five items that you can use it for, the the idle loan or economic injury disaster loan is still lacking those uh, prescriptive or detailed guidelines on what you can use it for. So today I'll, I'll try to give you an overview of the idle loan. What are the key terms and conditions? Uh, just a disclaimer here. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to share my understanding of what those key terms and conditions on the loan agreement with my background uh, with accounting and finance and also as a business owner. So uh, make sure you consult with, with your attorney on the key terms and conditions of the contract before you sign that loan agreement and what are the eligible and ineligible expenses. So first, we need to really understand what the IDA loan for. So IDA loan per uh, SBA loan agreement is solely to be used as working capital to alleviate economic injury caused by disaster occurring in the month of January 31st and continuing thereafter. So it's really more a lifeline for the business owners use that idle loan to paying those um, operating expenses uh, so the revenue is not coming in um, or not even the same level as you have it prior to pandemic but the the expenses are coming in the bills doesn't stop right so you still need to pay for those and this idle loan is really to help you uh, be able to pay for those um, expenses until you get back up on your feet and um, start generating um, revenue so what are those eligible expenses those are your working capital operating expenses so work Working capital are normally the materials and supplies that you need to purchase and use that to generate revenue. Or if you're a service company, professional company, then your working capital will be more on paying those employees. So that could be materials and supplies, payroll, fixed debts that you need to pay every month like rent, commercial, mortgage payments, uh, utilities also insurance and, and some other operating expenses that could have been paid had the disaster not occurred. So let's look at the loan agreement itself. So when uh, the, the loan amount actually differs, uh, it can range from really low amount up to 150000 Recently, the, the maximum amount is 150000 So the interest rate is 3.75, really, um, you know, very low interest rate and it's payable over 30 years there's no prepayment uh, penalties so if you decide or if you uh, found out like after six months you don't really need it or this is not for you you can pay the full amount but of course there's interest accrued over the time that you receive from the time that you receive the loan proceeds up to the time that you pay it so just keep in mind that there's interest accrued from the time that you receive um, the payment since the loan is not uh, payable you don't have to pay it until after one year it's very clear um, that the interest will accrue from the time that you receive the loan up to the first um, month that you will be paying that monthly amortization and so just by doing some sort of calculation it looks like they're adding the interest that accrued for that one year and putting that as part of the total loan amount and um, amortizing that over 
30, uh, 29 years because that's the remaining life of your loan. So as I said, uh, the idle loan is uh, payable over 30 years at 3.75% interest rate. That is a very good uh, rate. That's a very low interest rate. Now, it's also stated that on the contract that um, you don't have to pay until after uh, 12 months, uh, after one year. But the interest accrues from the time that you receive the loan proceeds. So when I was trying to figure out like how they come up with that total payment uh, per month uh, on the 13th, starting on the 13th month, uh, it looks like they've added the interest that accrued from year one and added that as part of the loan and spread that over the remaining life of the loan, which is 29 years. So here, uh, if you do say um, 100, if you have like 150,000 loan, say 150,000 uh, times uh, 0 0.0375, and that's the interest rate uh, annual interest rate so the interest rate for that will be 5625 so if i add the 155 the 5625 to the 150000 loan your loan amount is 155625 at 3.75 over 29 years so this is your that's how the monthly uh, payment schedule um, is calculated so as you can see here the total interest that you will pay for um, the duration of the loan is 99,000 so that's about two-thirds of your uh, principal loan amount so that's a lot of interest expense to pay um, so as you will see later on there's a lot of restrictions on the idle loan so it's probably not a bad idea to really plan and once your business is um, up and running uh, going back to your new normal and you have some money that you can actually use to pay uh, some of this loan slowly and make it instead of 29 years over say 10 years or 15 or 20 years then you can save a lot of money on the interest expense and also save yourself from all those um, restrictions so if you pay it off then you're no longer your business is no longer subject to those restrictions so let's say if you want to pay it off over uh, 15 years so of course the interest expense will be reduced by uh, almost half and then this is what um, it's going to look like in terms of what you have to pay monthly uh, starting on the 13th month uh, that's about 1100 now if you think uh, you'll be able to pay it in 10 years then that is even better uh, but you're looking at about 1500 uh, but you don't have to really um, be very um, kind of what do you call this uh, very rule specific and okay I will pay it in 10 years or 15 years you can uh, you can be flexible in prepaying the, the debt if you have uh, excess money that you have available uh, because your business is doing well then you can prepay uh, whatever amount you can uh, you think you can prepay and so again that's just accelerating the, the pay, repayment of this loan and since there's no prepayment penalty then that's really the best way to go so let's go back to the the loan agreement so again it's 3.75 payable over 30 years uh, you will be given like an amount that you will pay uh, on the the 13th month right um, so some other provisions here if uh, if your if your loanable amount is over 25,000 then you will be subject to collateral and the collateral the type of collateral are listed here on the loan agreement as well but it's basically your business assets they're not necessarily asking for a list of business assets that you will be using as a collateral but you're just stating that um, um, if you have this business assets then this will be used as a collateral for that loan now anything uh, 25,000 or lower of loan amount will not be subject to collateral 
so if you're uh if you have like a uh, a loan amount of thirty thousand you were given thirty thousand and you're thinking um you i probably don't need a thirty thousand then you can borrow twenty five thousand um and you don't have to subject yourself to that collateral requirement so that's just something to keep in mind so another provisions here that i want to discuss is uh, it stated here requirements relative to collateral so borrower will not sell or transfer any collateral described uh, on the previous statement without the prior consent of SBA so you would ask why why is that well because they are using that assets your business assets as a collateral so if you decide to sell or transfer those collateral you need to get prior consent from SBA so now on the use of loan proceeds, this is the one that I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, the use of loan proceeds is clearly defined on the uh, the loan agreement. So you have to be careful uh, that you use the idle loan for its um, intended purpose. Otherwise, you're violating the, the terms and condition of the contract. So the use of loan proceeds, use of this loan solely as working capital. To alleviate economic injury caused by disaster occurring the month of January 31st, 2020 and onwards. So again, this is a lifeline. This is an assistance provided by the government to small business owners uh, who were affected uh, economically by the disaster. And for those business owners to continue operating so they don't have to close their business uh, you were given this lifeline to pay for those operating expenses continue operating uh, until you get back up on your feet and being able to generate enough revenue to pay for your operating expenses so again just keep that in mind it's only for working capital for operating expenses now here because this is a loan um, again comparing this with the ppp loan so the PPP loan is a grant. You have to go through the process of applying for the loan forgiveness and providing all the uh, supporting documents. For the idle loan, it's not a grant. It's a loan. And so you have to make sure that you have all those receipts, invoices, that you can support the uses of the idle loan. Where do you use that loan uh, for? And of course, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be uh, used for solely for working capital or operating expenses. The second item here, borrower will not use directly or indirectly any portion of the proceeds of this loan to relocate without the prior written permission of SBA. So you cannot use the proceeds of the idle loan for your relocation um, expenses. Um, you can relocate to another location, but you also have to inform uh, SBA that you're relocating to um, another, um, say, another state or another location. There's also a provision here that borrower will, to the extent feasible, purchase only American-made equipment and products with the proceeds of this loan. So, again, that's another requirement. That's another provision there. Um, if um, uh, to the extent feasible purchase only American made equipment and products with the pr proceeds of this loan now um, this is another provision I'm not gonna go through all the provisions of uh, this contract I'm just gonna go over those that kind of stood out to me that a business owner should really be aware of and should understand just note as well that the idle loan is not new uh, it, it's been around to um, assist during hurricane or flood or some other kind of disaster. So there may be some language in this uh, loan agreement that doesn't make sense for the disaster that we're having right now, the, the COVID-19. So just keep that in mind when you're uh, reviewing and looking at the loan agreement. So the other provision here is compensation from other sources so eligibility for this disaster loan is limited to disaster losses that are not compensated by other sources so what that means is if you've received other 
type of compensation say um, an insurance claim then you have to notify SBA now the question I get a lot too is can I have the PPP loan and the IDA loan you can for as long as um, you're not using the same same expense for claiming under the PPP loan and under the IDA loan so SBA is really very clear on that no double dipping so for example the PPP you've used that for your payroll for uh, say April to May over that eight week period and you're still not um, have recovered or not generating um, enough revenue to pay for your payroll then you can use that that either loan proceeds for starting June for example so in that case, I don't think you have to notify SBA of that because there's really no no overlap of the of the compensation there. Now the the hazard insurance it's, it's just really stating that if your loan is over twenty five thousand and you have business assets that you're using as a collateral, those physical assets like machineries and equipment, uh, you have to maintain a hazard insurance for that. Now the next one here again is also very important. Uh, this is not new. I mean, if you've done, if you have obtained loan from other financial institution, other lender, or if you have an existing or paid off SBA, this is really standard procedures that you need to have or to maintain an accurate books and records that you can readily provide to SBA if they ask for it. Just remember that the financial information, that's their window to, their, to your operation. So they can look at your financials and see and really understand what's going on in your business. And for them, it's really more like have understanding and also knowing if you're still uh, in good financial health to be able to pay off that loan. Just make sure that you have adequate books and records uh, that you can provide to SBA when they ask for it. There's also a provision here that they can inspect your your books and records. Uh, they can come in or hire um, an auditor to uh, review your records. I think this is also standard that SBA would require uh, a copy of your financial uh, statements, uh, whether on a quarterly or an annual basis. So just keep that in mind. And again, this is something that you need to put in place if you have an idle loan you have to make sure that you maintain you have a good accounting system you maintain an accurate and up-to-date books and records so when they ask for it you can easily provide that to them also keep in mind on the tracking of expenses and just making sure that you have adequate books and records to uh, demonstrate that you've used the IDA loan funds for its intended purpose. Though it's not mandated or required as per the loan agreement, it doesn't hurt to have a separate bank account uh, where you have the IDA loan and all the expenses that you've used the IDA loan for. It's just going to be uh, under that particular bank account. So it's a lot easier, uh, increased transparency, and it's easier for you to monitor and control all those expenses that you've used the IDA loan for, for. So that's what I would recommend. Limits on the distribution of assets. This is another important uh, provision on the loan agreement that business owners should really be aware of. Uh, the borrower will not, without the prior consent of SBA, make any distribution of borrower's assets or give any preferential treatment make any advance directly or indirectly by way of loan gift bonus or otherwise to any owner or partner of any of its employees so what it's saying is you cannot use the idle loan for like draws or distribution um, or anything that would be um, beneficial uh, or a windfall for the owner um, again going back to that purpose of this loan is to help business owner use this loan proceeds as a lifeline to continue running their business keep their business open this is not to pay the business owner a bonus or additional draw or using this for their personal um, expenses so just again keep that in mind you also have all this certifications here and 
again you, you have to make sure that before you sign the agreement or if you've already signed the loan agreement just review this and make sure that um, you really understand all the certification because if you sign this and you lie they can go after you for fraud or asset misappropriation so it's very important that you understand what you're certifying for but basically what it's saying too just um on a high level is you're certifying that all the information you have to provide it to sba is is true and accurate and you will be using the idle loan for its um, intended purpose now the last item here on the contract that i will discuss is if you a business owner wrongfully misapplies the proceeds of an sba disaster loan you can be liable um, to one and a half times the original principal amount of the loan so if you borrowed a hundred thousand and misappropriated or misused the funds meaning you use the funds um, not for alleged uh, eligible expenses then you can be liable for 150,000. So again, just just keep that in mind. So just continuing on with the discussion of the the idle loan, again just to summarize the eligible expenses are the operating expenses, the working capital. So what are those? Your fixed debts, uh, your payroll, materials and supplies that you need to purchase to generate and use that to generate revenue. Uh, insurance and some other operating expenses that could have been paid had the disaster not occurred now what are the ineligible expenses assuming you've already accepted uh, you got the funds now what uh, you don't want to get in trouble um, again you're worried because there's not a lot of uh, detailed guidelines with regards to what are the the proper use uh, of the the idle loan so i have this uh, document from SBA and um, it describes all the ineligible uses of loan so I mentioned earlier if you remember the limits on the distributions of asset and asset includes cash to the to the owner shareholder so the, the owner shareholder cannot use this funds um, to pay themselves dividends and bonuses uh, disbursement to owners unless it's a performance of service so if you're an s corp you're a shareholder of an s corp you should be paying yourself reasonable compensation and you should be getting w2 at the end of the year so those wages salaries those are um, for the performance of service to the business so that is an allowed use of the idle loan but if other than the the wages if you're disbursing yourself as an owner or a shareholder other than for the performance of service like dividends and bonuses as i mentioned earlier then that is not an allowable use of the idle loan repayment of a stockholder loan to the business so there are shareholder or owner that have advanced money or loan the business uh, at some point in time now you if you have this money you cannot use the idle loan uh, to pay yourself for for that loan that you have given uh, the business um, expansion of facilities or acquisition of fixed assets so this is really important again uh, i always go back to what the definition of the idle loan for it's for working capital so if you're you're thinking about expanding your business then you're probably not in that uh, situation where you don't have enough funds to pay for your operating expenses because you're thinking of expanding so uh, this is not an allowable use of the idle loan you cannot use the idle loan for expansion any kinds of expansion also you cannot use the idle loan for acquisition of fixed assets so what are fixed assets normally major expenditures like um, purchases of machineries equipment uh, those are normally in your balance sheet those are your depreciable assets those that you will uh, it will have a useful life of more than one year so 
you can use the the threshold of 2000 to 2500 if anything below that then that's most likely uh, an expense right away it's right off as an expense but it's over 2500 and you will use it for more than one year uh, it's got a useful life of more than one year that most likely um, a purchase of fixed assets and you cannot use the idle loan for for that purchase repair or replacement of physical damages and refinancing long-term de debt this is one of the most question most common questions that i get from a lot of business owners well i have this sba loan for seven percent now i have this idle loan for 3.75 percent so i will use this idle loan to repay or refinance this uh, long-term debt with a higher interest rate well under this information that was given by sba you cannot use the idle loan to refinance or repay your long-term debt again that is not the purpose of this loan the purpose of this loan is for you to be able to meet your short-term obligation your current uh, operating expenses that are due so you don't close uh, your business you can continue to operate and run your business so just always keep that in mind just by reading through uh, some of the information provided by by SBA I tried to really categorize those different um, items that they mentioned as ineligible expenses and i can group them into four three or four major categories so the first category here is um, any distributions dividends bonuses disbursement to owners unless it's performance of service uh, and repayment of stockholder or principal loan so what it's saying is the the spa don't want the business owner or shareholder to use this more like as a windfall for them that they can um, solely benefit uh, from this uh, loan personally so this is really to help the business continue to uh, operate by having this assistance to be able to pay for those expenses operating expenses that they cannot pay because they are affected by the disaster that they are not uh, generating enough revenue to pay for those expenses so that's the main purpose now again you cannot pay yourself extra bonus you cannot use this idle loan to pay yourself dividends or distribution that's really not the purpose of this loan the second group is around uh, refinancing or paying down debt right so refinancing long-term debt paying down debt or payment of any part of it, direct federal debt uh, except irs obligation so again you cannot use this uh, either loan to pay for uh, those long-term debt that has a higher interest rate now with either loan it's got 3.75 percent and you benefit by reducing your interest expense uh, payment for the loan so you cannot use the idle loan for that uh, the third one here is for any expansion of facilities or acquisition of fixed assets or repair or replacement of physical damages so that's uh, with regards to investing activities you cannot use the idle loan for investing activities for acquisition of fixed assets or expanding your business that's not the intent of this loan and finally and mention on the on the contract as well uh, you cannot use this for your relocation expenses but you also have to inform sba uh, if you move or you relocate well i hope that you're able to get some information and have some clarifications on the the proper use and improper use of um, idle loan funds again if there's uh, there's not a lot of prescriptive guidelines yet from sba hopefully that's coming soon so as soon as they become available i will definitely share that again i'm christy fontanilia fas bookkeeping and tax services and i will see you soon